Uh, it's Faceless Tack. Happy New Year. Let's hope this year is a good one. Um, last year I made this board, uh, this uh, console, which was a uh, RetroPie uh, Game Boy Color all-in-one system. Uh, I'll go over quick, grab a quick overview if you haven't seen the other video. Basically what I did was took a Raspberry Pi Zero W, uh, made a board with a, a screen, and it's got the power, and it also made it that it was connectable to another board, which would be the control board. So it's two boards, one with the controls and the sound, and one with like the brains, with the screen, the Raspberry Pi, the power. I did this reason because, um, for one, if you make a board too big, over 100 mil, uh, the board houses will charge you extra money to maybe produce them, and because this was going to be um, a one mil thick board, it was either going to cost even more. So I want to. I kind of figured it out if I had two boards, and then I can swap out one board on the other board if I need to rev them or change them, and then it won't cost as much to rev the entire board, and then I have to desolder all this and put it onto another board. So this is the original um, one. There was a few uh, shortcomings with it basically um, it was great but the USB-C port was too far back I tried to have an amp board um, to uh, boost the sound but I couldn't get it to work so I just uh, deleted that out uh, and then the buttons as well I was using these clicky uh, clicky horrible buttons but it was kind of like just a stop gap to see just to get the system up and running to um, try and get it to work so I've addressed these in my new build which is this one which I have um, Deleted the amp board, just got rid of the amp completely. Just um, the USB C port, I moved right far forwards on the board as far forwards as I could get it because uh, on the original one, as you can see here, there's like some posts um, that anchor it down. So I basically moved them as far forward as possible just to get that extra few millimeters and it worked out. Um, I kind of tidied up some of the traces as well on the board. Everything else will stay the same, really. Uh, redesigned the uh, control board, control and sound board. I wanted to use, I wanted a board, a footprint, that you could still use clicky buttons, because I know some people like clicky buttons, you know, each their own. Uh, I also tried to get some of them dome ones that I use on the uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Um, so we kind of made a footprint. There's basically just two pads, two big pads. And then you can solder the sides of the buttons to however you want, really. And then it also had this bit in the middle, which is for the uh, membrane. And that actually works pretty well. Really well, in fact. The only way, the only thing that it doesn't work for is a start and select. but Because they have a different, uh, completely different uh, footprint to them. But I've just used the clicky dome ones for them anyway. So you don't really use them that often. So it's kind of like not really needed to have them, you know, the, the non-clicky ones. And then you kind of know when you need to, you know when you press them. I also added uh, two uh, speakers because I only had one speaker. I've only got one speaker in this build because I did try two and it didn't really make any difference. So I was like, you might as well get rid of it. But it's there if you need it. Uh, that was it really. There was, um, I kind of just redesigned, had this nice with a nice magnet. Okay, so it just uh, clips in there. Still kept the batteries the same. Everything else was pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing I did do was, because this one uh, has got a plastic screen protector, I actually ordered some glass ones for this, because the one that come with this was just, I cleaned it with my t-shirt ones and it absolutely just scratched the hammer up, so I was like, I'll go and uh, order some glass ones, they're so much, so, so nicer. Um, and also as well, on you can't really see, but on this one, there was a bit of light bleed at the edge of the screen, so I just took a little bit of tape over it just to hide that in it. I think it works really well. The screen is smaller than a Game Boy Color screen, but it's about the same size as them, like the the, the original cheap uh, screens that everyone was coming out with, the screen replacements. So, you know, it's kind of like not here, not there. But you also get the, this with this, you get the uh, added benefit of having a Raspberry Pi and a emulation system. So I'll go into a few games, a few Game Boy games. Dr. Mario, to show you the sound. On load. This is probably the best to test the sound that with. I think it works really well. I 
So the other system that you can really run on this is um, probably the the NES because it's got the control scheme is the same. Uh, I've got Doctor Mario on here as well. Yeah, because the rest of them, um, you, you the game to be honest, the the the, the Raspberry Pi Zero W doesn't hasn't got really upgraded to run a Game Boy Advanced, uh, and we haven't got the L and R buttons. Because I was thinking you could have had. Could have mounted some LNR buttons in the back, but then you think, well, you might as well have uh, X and Y as well, and then place NES games. Oh, that doesn't actually work. DuckTales works, I think. So it's like, but there isn't really enough um, room to add because I've got my power board here where the um, where you'd have the uh, X and uh, the other two buttons. But you know, if someone wants to go out there and um, try it. They're welcome to. But I think it's plenty loud enough, and you can just put in your headphone jack as well, so you can run headphones in there, which is good. But yeah, um, I was kind of like toying with the idea of am I going to sell these or not. So if anyone is interested in buying one, drop us a link, drop us a line in the comments, and we'll um, try and come to some um, some negotiations. But I don't know because I might I might just um, sell the odd one or two. I'm not really going to start mass producing these. But if you want to go out there. And make your own. You're welcome to all the files are there, all the CAD files, all the free CAD files, uh, all the 3D print files will all be out there. There's only really the the things you need to 3D print is these two buttons and the back cover. But to be honest, the back cover you could engineer that yourself. The only thing that you'd really probably struggle with trying to make is these buttons because they're kind of like finicky because they sit on the the domes. But even then, you could probably I don't know work something out. So it's not really necessarily you need a 3D printer. And uh, some of the case trimming isn't really that bad with this one. Because all you have to do is cut the sides of the screen out. Cut a bit of a gap for the power wall to go. Um, there's some bits down here for the headphone jack. And that's really it really. Um, oh there's the obviously the, the gap for the Raspberry Pi. Um, but all that can kind of, you know, you could, you could make this. You can make this yourself out of a um, game case. Just cut the back out of one. You know, it's not, it's not, you know, if you haven't got a 3D printer, it's not completely inaccessible. But yeah, as usual, uh, link in the description with all the uh, files and blog posts and uh, anything else that I probably missed out. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.